Today, the harmful effects of greenhouse gases on our climate are well known. Transport alone represents 19% of CO2 emissions in the European Union. Road traffic is increasing every year and so is pollution. The European Union recognized this and adopted the ambitious objective of reducing CO2 emissions from new vehicles to 120 grams per kilometer by 2012. This is equivalent to 4.5 liters of diesel to 5 liters of petrol per 100 kilometers. The EU's objective was first proposed in 1995 and the reduction strategy based on voluntary agreements, consumer information and fiscal measures has delivered some progress, but not enough. That's why the European Commission proposed a new strategy to achieve the 120 grams objective based on a legislative framework rather than a voluntary approach. It will focus on passenger cars, light vans, but also on some essential vehicle components, such as tires, as well as the increased use of biofuels. Renault, like all responsible players, believes that the European Commission's position, on the one hand to comply with the Kyoto 1 Accords, and on the other to prepare Kyoto 2, is absolutely legitimate and justified. Automobile manufacturers realize that the future belongs to improving car efficiency. There are many technologies already on the market that can deliver substantial CO2 savings. Beyond advanced approaches such as hybrid systems, there are also technologies that can be applied to today's new cars, such as engine downsizing with turbocharging or low rolling resistance tires. Everybody wins. Drivability is maintained, fuel consumption is reduced, and the impact on climate is lower. Even marketing can contribute to promoting greener cars, and car makers have been already invited to sign up to a code of sustainable advertising. An important priority is raising the driver's awareness. There is no room for bluff marketing in the area of the environment, given the ecological emergency of climate change. On the other hand, there is a huge need to educate and train drivers so they understand. It is true that when you are fighting to win 2, 3, 4, 5 gram of carbon dioxide per kilometer driven, the customer is not necessarily aware if he doesn't understand the subject. Reaching the ambitious targets adopted by the EU will not only concern vehicle manufacturers, but also producers of car components, such as tires and fuel suppliers. Among the solutions developed by the industry, one is particularly innovative, a tire made from biofiller, renewable material that's less dependent on petroleum products. Its designer gives us the recipe. Here we have the main ingredients in a tire formula, polymer, silica and various additives. So the innovation consists of having partially replaced silica by starch-based biofiller. 20% starch in the new formula means 20% maize. A tire is partly made from this cereal which like all vegetable crops absorbs the CO2 in the air. Mixed with silica, the biofiller reduces the amount of this polluting product traditionally used in this industry. The production of this tire will therefore minimize CO2 emissions. It will also emit less into the atmosphere as it drives on the road. But the main advantage is that the addition of biofiller will allow to reduce the rolling resistance of the tire, another contribution to save the environment. The beauty of the project is that we're making advanced technology of it. Using this type of product, we can also minimize the energy absorbed by the formula, which translates into allowing us to produce tires with low resistance and therefore reduced fuel consumption for the vehicle. And as a consequence, fewer CO2 emissions. This project received the support of the European Commission under the LIFE program. I think the opportunity uh, given us under the LIFE project allows us to look at a variety of technologies and how to put them together into a package that will deliver the objectives that the European Union wants to achieve 
but also make sure that we're meeting the needs of the end user as far as safety and other parameters as far as tire performance that cannot be sacrificed to get to the rolling resistance and uh, emissions levels required by the European Union. Cutting the CO2 emissions from transport will require efforts from all sectors, including the fuel suppliers. The objective is clear, to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions caused by the production, transport and use of fuels by 10% from petrol and diesel by 2020. Shell is responding to that challenge by reducing emissions from our own operations through working with consumers to help reduce their emissions, but most importantly, working to develop second generation biocomponents that offer the largest potential to reduce CO2 emissions from road transport fuels. Traditional oil-based fuels already contain additives which limit CO2 emissions. But today, EU legislation aims to promote greater use of biofuels. The first generation already exists, produced from vegetable matter such as rapeseed oil and wheat. But these biofuels are still expensive. They compete with food production and raise some concerns about the environment. Shell in Germany is developing second generation biofuels in partnership with Corin, a world leader in the field. Our partnership with Corin is to develop uh, what we call biomass to liquid fuel. This takes wood chips converts it into gas and then uses a shell proprietary process to turn that into a high quality liquid fuel that is very suitable for use in today's diesel, diesel engines. Wood waste is a renewable resource. It's cheap and it's non-food. These second generation biofuels will deliver up to 90% of CO2 emission savings compared to fossil fuels. But it'll take another five years before they're marketed on a large scale. Another solution to cut the emissions from transport is to reduce the use of cars and road transport in general. This is especially important in urban areas which are responsible for approximately 40% of greenhouse gas emissions, caused mainly by private vehicles. The city of Nantes in France has around 780,000 inhabitants. Its non-polluting public transport development policy is one of the most efficient in Europe. It began at the right time, 25 years ago, when the population was becoming increasingly mobile. The 1980s saw the start of dynamic growth in the area. More people, more jobs, a greater need for mobility. And at that time, the politicians had a choice, either continue doing what had been done in previous decades to develop access for cars, or, on the contrary, to come up with and establish an alternative policy. The choice was made. The first tram line came into service in 1985. Today, a fleet of more than 80 trams and 350 buses serves the entire urban area. To limit the access of private cars to the city centre, 18 parking lots were created with direct access to the centre by bus. The roads gave priority to public transport at the expense of automobiles. The busway line, which came on stream in 2006, confirms the strategy applied by the company operating the network. In the month after the busway came into service, the traditional customer base started using it, and the parking lots automatically filled up. Today, 25% of passengers on the busway used to take their car on the same journey, so the reaction has been very positive. With the conversion of the bus fleet to natural gas, a new filling station was constructed. European strategy aims to encourage public transport which emits less and is better organized. But it will take time to change people's habits. At the beginning we must admit it was difficult because we had to explain that we were changing policy, developing alternatives to cars and trying to make it easier to use other methods of transport than the car. At the beginning people weren't used to it. Today the situation's completely reversed. Today it's the people who are demanding new infrastructures. They want to have the same advantages as other neighborhoods. It's clear that we're seeing changing practices and it's happening increasingly quickly. Businesses have an important role to play in the strategy. To encourage staff to use public transport, Nantes has developed a mobility plan to which everyone is committed, the city, 
the transport company and local enterprises. Companies will subsidize the purchase of tickets for their employees, encouraging the development of inner city transportation. Semitan will study how to serve particular companies and grant reductions on ticket prices. Today, we have 47,000 employees involved in this initiative. A new railway line between Nantes and neighboring communities has also been opened to encourage workers to leave their cars at home. The waterways provide another alternative. Shuttles have been established between the south of the Loire and the city center. They connect with electric minibus lines. The quality and diversity offered to the traveling public has allowed public transport to win market share. In 2010, they're expecting 120 million trips by public transport, representing a 20% increase. Bicycle traffic is also a strong element in the city's mobility policy. There are 360 kilometers of cycle tracks at the moment, and there'll be 560 kilometers by 2010. By this date, Nantes is hoping to have struck a balance between the use of private cars and other methods of transport. But from an environmental protection point of view, the results are already being felt. In each neighborhood where we've invested massively by developing alternative solutions to the use of private cars, we've been able to observe a reduction of approximately 20% in CO2 emissions over five years, mainly linked to the fact that people, instead of systematically using their car, now use other methods, notably public transport. The reduction in greenhouse gas emissions caused by transport concerns everyone, industry, public authorities, and citizens. The comprehensive approach will be necessary to achieve Europe's ambitious targets.